Ignorance would say, oh my goodness, what a beautiful white butterfly. Never seen those before. Well, let me tell you, those things are the enemy. Those little butterflies are called cabbage white moths and they will destroy plants like mustard and collards and broccoli and you can see that I have some um, infestation here on these leaves. This is the first time I've ever grown any kind of collards or anything so I was told to take them out before I put in my spring garden because it would encourage um, insects and I see that that is happening. Um, so what seems like this beautiful white butterfly that's such a rare occurrence and a beautiful thing, well, I have learned that it will destroy my garden if I don't take care of it. So tonight I am going to get some, uh, I have actually already mixed it up, neem oil, some soap, and some water, the soaps to emulsify the oil and the water, and I'm gonna coat the front and back of the leaves, and I'm gonna try to find what you can see, like all the holes, and, and they're green little caterpillars. Again, seems innocent, but what I'm learning about gardening is something that appears innocent, here's another one again, usually is not. And we must um, research and target, so we can target uh, these insects that will destroy our garden. Um, so I also see this relating to our own life and our relationships that sometimes something seems beautiful and like, oh, this is such a breath of fresh air. This is so nice break from the stress that I've been under. And guess what? That thing, that person, that whatever is not a good thing. It is the enemy of our relationships, and it will separate us from relationships, and it will even separate us from God if we continue to disobey and turn the other eye or turn the other way. Um, because if, just like this plant, if I just continue to leave these unchecked, it wouldn't take but a few more days before this plant is destroyed. And if I was expecting to get seeds let this go to seed to save seeds for next season's harvest, that wouldn't happen. Literally a whole other generation of plants would be eliminated, not just this one plant. And that's how it is, I believe, with enemies in our, in our, in our life, emotionally, spiritually, physically. If we don't address it, if we don't recognize, if we don't allow people to help us through hard times and get counsel um, that these things that we think are innocent and even beautiful and relaxing oh look at them just fluttering they will destroy um, not just current relationships but future relationships and I also see a little wasp so when we see a wasp what do we usually think oh, I'll kill it bad 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 or you know a bee um, but guess what? When it comes to this garden, the wasp and the bee are not our enemies. Uh, the bee, they're coming here for water. Um, of course, when the, there can be some pollination, I guess, from the wasp when there is, you know, pollen on their you know, legs and they go from one plant to the next, even though it's not targeted to pollinate. But definitely the bees, when um, the blooms come out, they're harmless. Um, I teach the kids, yeah, don't, don't, mess with a, a, a bee, um, just let them be. But our tendency is to think these are bad, um, kill them. But what we should be targeting right now in my garden is these little white moths because they will destroy it. And we have things in our lives that appear okay and not, gonna, not a big deal. We should be targeting it um, to get rid of it. To, to get whatever kind of help we need to address this problem or it will destroy our lives, um, our relationships, and just, you know, keep us distant from um, God. And that's not what we want. And that definitely will stop the blessings from the next generation um, and affect the next generation more than we can possibly comprehend. So anyway, I was just standing here at the garden and I uh, thought I would share a little message. Um, 
this is kind of my therapy place. I believe there is a reason in the Bible why there's so many um, terms you use as sowing and reaping and all these different gardening terms. And I really believe that if we want to experience and understand what God is saying in his word, that we really need to get out and get in the garden and get in the dirt or pot or plant a seed in a potted a pot. You don't, you know, we don't make excuses. Like I don't have the time. I don't have, you know, the resources. And those are the same kind of excuses that we use in our walk with God as well. So I don't think it's a coincidence, but just like we need these plants to nourish our food, we need time with God to nourish our spirit. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and uh, let me know if you've got a garden. I, I would love to know what you're planning. And this is just maybe one of our five gardens right now. I've got a half planted, lots more to come. And I hope to share more content um, relating to the garden of our soul because I think there's just so many parallels as we amend the garden, plant seeds, uh, keep seeds when they go to bloom, like how that relates to our spiritual and emotional health as well.